guys. So by this time, you've probably watched a few of my video blogs, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, study abroad sounds so great. How do I get started? So if you check on my website, um, Drexo to Japan, I compiled a 10-step program to help you get started on your study abroad program. The first step is to find a program that fits what you want to do. Whether you want to travel, whether you want to find a language intensive program, whether you really want to delve into the culture and speak the language, or if you just want a short term program to just uh, experience the taste of uh, another country's culture. There are a lot of programs out there, which brings us to step two, which is to contact your study abroad program. Because most likely they'll already have brochures made and someone there can help you find what you really want to do. So, the third step is finding ways to finance your trip. I also created a link on my website, uh, different ways you can finance your trip, um, different scholarships that are available uh, for U.S. citizens, whether you're also co-oping abroad or not, Drexel also offers some uh, co-op stipends or funds if you're going to be co-oping abroad. Ways to save money on your trip, find cheap plane tickets, um, live cheaply in whatever country that, that you want to live in, So and some other helpful tips that can help you save money. So the best way to finance your trip is to apply for scholarships. Um, there are a bunch of scholarships out there, um, especially for language intensive programs um, like Japanese, Chinese, uh, just off of the top of my head. Um, I suppose German would also be one, some uh, Finnish. <laughs> so it's like pretty much languages that are not widely spoken. So like not Spanish or you know English. And the thing with scholarships is that you have to apply early. Um, you have to apply fast because <laughs> most likely they will have uh, some kind of application process and if you're applying for like five or ten different scholarships, you'll need the time to complete all of them, uh, you know, write essays. Even though a lot of scholarships, their essays um, might seem the same, you should really take the time to kind of customize each essay for each, each scholarship, and that way you'll have a better chance of getting it. So one scholarship that I applied for uh, was, the, was the Gilman Scholarship, and I actually got that one. It's, the Gilman Foundation is a really big program, and they help sponsor a lot, a lot of undergraduate kids every year to go to language intense, uh, go to um, I guess these extreme language countries. Um, so all you gotta do is write an essay explaining why you want to study in this particular country, and you also need to write an essay describing the service project that you want to complete after your study abroad. Uh, to kind of raise awareness for future uh, students to um, for that so that they can so that they know that there are resources out there like Gilman that can help them finance their trip and that they won't be limited by their like financial status so <laughs> number four on my list is actually to start applying uh, once you get once you know what program you're going to go into you've got you've talked it over with your study abroad advisor is to start applying to those scholarships write a kick-ass essay because most likely you'll have a really good reason to study abroad and not just not just to party or whatever most likely have uh, a really an educational reason <laughs> for studying abroad you want to learn the language meet new people, experience new cultures, that sort of stuff. So write a, write a kick-ass essay and best of luck on that. And number five is not as easy as it sounds, but it's pretty much to get accepted. So once you're past this part, you're probably, you can breathe a sigh of relief because, you know, you're in. For some schools it takes a lot longer than others, so hopefully you can hear back from them before you have to start worrying and stuff about finals and all that. <laughs> and, okay, 
Number six on my list, if you have not already started, is that you should start learning the language that you're gonna be going to. One of the biggest challenges, I think, going to Japan was not knowing the language. I studied Jap uh, Japanese for one year before going, but that was not nearly enough. There's, it's really just like a whole different culture there. It's not just learning the language, it's like learning the mannerisms and how people speak, how they kind of uh, communicate their ideas across. So that's something that's really important. Hopefully you have started learning Japanese if you're deciding to go to Japan <laughs> or else you would, it wouldn't be very, it would be very difficult I think for you to experience Japan fully without knowing the language. So yeah, take language classes now. Number seven, so you've applied for your scholarships, you've um, got accepted into the program, you started learn learning the language. So number seven is to book your plane ticket. Once you get accepted to a program, most likely they will send you details on move-ins, so that way you can start booking your plane ticket, um, finding cheap tickets. Uh, especially if you're going to anywhere like across the globe from the US like Japan, China, Korea. Tickets will be expensive if you don't book ahead. So a few good websites. Uh, I went on Student Universe. Orbit is also a good website. Ask your friends that have studied abroad what they did. Uh, cheap ways to get tickets. You can buy connecting flight tickets. Uh, this never worked for me but I've here heard some success stories from other people. And also, I hear that some tickets are cheaper during certain times, so you can try for that. Booking like on Sunday at 3 a.m. might be the cheapest. Uh, you might have to look online for that. Okay. So, number eight is that make sure you don't have any outstanding issues um, right before you leave. Uh, for me, I was unfortunately called into jury duty right as I was leaving and I had to get that postponed so definitely take care of matters like that because you'll be halfway across the country and it'll be a lot harder to do something there than it is to do here like get rid of jury duty you know make sure your apartment is is paid for if you haven't paid for it already I don't know why it wouldn't be paid for um, make sure you're you're, you don't have any holds on your account, your school, financial, academic, stuff like that. Number nine is, especially if you're going to be staying in a country for longer than six months, six months to a year, you should definitely pack lightly because most likely they will have everything that you need there in most developed countries. And it might, it might even be good to not bring too much of your stuff with you that way you can really kind of see how they live, how they, you know, deal with everyday issues. Some countries might not have as much like technology like Xbox or, you know, PC or whatever, and you might just want to live like them for a couple of days or live like them for a couple of months. So you don't really need your Xbox going abroad. And number 10 is pretty much going off of that idea. Get yourself ready for a new adventure. So studying abroad means you are leaving your old self behind for six months. Uh, you're traveling to a new country. Um, there'll be... Ooh, there'll be a lot of opportunities for you. Um, don't be the same person that you were back home um, in regards to don't be so, re so reserved. You know, if someone, if you're presented with the opportunity to do something outside of your comfort zone, take it. Don't regret not doing anything, because this is a one-time opportunity. Going off of my own study abroad, I, I felt like I was a little too reserved, and I should have just, you know, acted on my first impulse and just done that or this, and not have been like, oh, but what if I fail? Well. You might, there's, there's always a chance of you failing, but you should always take that chance 
in that way you're never really failing you're always trying something new which is a great thing to do um, what else additional pieces of advice that I have for you are there will be a lot of other study abroad students most likely from other pro parts of the world um, studying where you are um, and if it's anything like the JIPE program which is kind of a kind of a dual Japanese English program also for other international kids international kids um, they will most likely know English and I mean it's good and all you'll be able to communicate with other international kids in English but don't forget that you're there to learn that country's language which is Japanese so don't so kind of don't always stay in your comfort zone and just only speak English um, sometimes you have to put yourself out there speak a little Japanese and maybe you'll sound weird at first but but after you know six months you'll be glad that you took those chances and your Japanese or whatever language you're learning will be significantly better so that's my number one piece of advice for you so and if you're still hesitant about studying abroad um, just know that now is really the time to do it when you're a student because um, you'll have a lot more opportunities to apply for financial aid as a student um, you don't have as many responsibilities or burdens that keep you from traveling like once you start working and you know you're young and you can handle more so right now is like the prime time to to just go out and explore the world and experience new cultures and uh, yeah that's it so in the future on my website I'll try to open up a forum of some kind of Q&A so if anyone has any additional questions um, they can just post there but for now if you have any additional questions you can just reach me at my email and I will post my email up right here so any questions just send it to me and I will try to respond back promptly so thanks for watching this week's episode of Drexel to Japan video blog. Alright, goodbye all.